Hello everyone. We are going to start with characteristic equations. <clears throat> this is section 5.2. Uh, first, uh, we are going to do a little recap of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Remember when we say that lambda is an eigenvalue for a matrix uh, A of size n by n, if there is a non-zero vector x, such that ax equals lambda x. This non-zero vector x is called the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Very important fact is this has to be non-zero and this equation has to be satisfied. Remember this equation is basically saying that when a acts on the vector non-zero vector x, it basically scales the vector. Lambda is, remember, a scalar quantity. Okay, so let's go ahead and now um, learn about more concepts in this uh, topic. The thing we're going to learn about is characteristic equation. So the questions are, if you're given a matrix, can we find eigenvalues? Yes, the answer is. Now, the question next one is, what is the process of finding those eigenvalues? Answer, we have something called characteristic equation. So let's define what is a characteristic equation. A characteristic equation is given by the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda i equals zero where lambda is the eigenvalue corresponding to the matrix A. Keep in mind guys, we are dealing with square matrices only. Okay, some things to keep in mind, just a reminder guys, uh, lambda is an eigenvalue of A, if or only if. A of X, there's no minus in the front guys. This is A, of x. Okay, no minus, please keep this in mind. This is a. Let me just cover this up. a of x equals lambda x has a non-trivial solution, which simply means that, remember we have done the algebra on ax equals lambda x. You take it on the other side. a minus lambda i x equal to zero has a non-trivial solution. Remember from chapter three, what does it tell us? That if you, if a matrix, this is a homogeneous matrix having a non-trivial so solutions, that means the columns are linearly dependent, which from chapter three tells us that the determinant of this matrix is zero. And also keep in mind when I say that this the homogeneous equation a minus lambda i x equals zero have a non-trivial solution. We're saying that the columns are linearly dependent. Linear dependence when it relates to the inverse of the matrix means that matrix is not invertible. Which in turn says if my matrix is non-invertible, that means the determinant of that matrix is zero. So this is basically talking from chapter one chapter 1, then we're getting chapter 2, that is the invertibility part, and which basically turns down to chapter 3. So all the three chapters we have learned so far are in this little, these three lines. Okay, keep those things very, very clear. Now, so this determinant, A minus lambda I, that means we're looking at this left-hand side of the equal sign, the left-hand side, guys, is called the characteristic polynomial. Remember, this is an equal, this is an equation. And determinant, remember, is a number. But now this one also has a variable lambda involved. So this will become a polynomial of degree um, um, lambda. What you're going to do is, I'm going to show you with the help of an example, what I just said, that this determinant is a characteristic. If this characteristic, guys, is in the name, polynomial. I hope you guys remember what's a polynomial. Simple polynomials, you know, as say a quadratic um, polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c, 3x squared minus 2x plus c. These polynomials, very important. Remember what a polynomial is, guys. Just to remember, remind you when I say the word polynomial. Very simple as saying, hey, 
I have x squared minus 2x plus 4, say. Or I can have x to the power 5 minus 2x cubed plus 3. It can be anything we are. A polynomial is a uh, function of this kind. Okay. So when I say this is a polynomial, so I'm going to be having something like this. But one main thing would be that this lambda would be replacing x. That's it. Okay, now let's look at an example and get ourselves familiarized with it. Okay, we would like to find the eigenvalues, the characteristic equation and the characteristic polynomial of this matrix and then find later on some eigenvectors. So to find the characteristic polynomial, what's characteristic polynomial? Simply determinant of A minus lambda I. I hope guys you we have done enough practice in section 5.1 of this lay book that you know how to write this one. So it's determinant of this matrix minus lambda i. Um, so just to give you a heads on here if you're forgetting it. So when I say a minus lambda i. I guys remember is the identity matrix. Okay so this would be 5, 3, 3, 5, minus lambda 1, 0, 0, 1. This i size matches with this a, otherwise it's not possible, guys. What's this? 5, 3, 3, 5, minus lambda 0, 0, lambda. And then you know how to do the math, and that's what you get here. This part is what you get. OK, now determinant. You all know how to find if it's a 2 by 2 matrix. You multiply these. Uh, diagonal elements, 5 minus lambda with 5 minus lambda, that square minus the diagonal elements which are going from top right to left bottom. So minus 9. And then you open it up, what do you see? It's a polynomial. So when I just said previously that this determinant is a characteristic polynomial, that means I will have something square and the variable will be lambda. That's a very important part. Clearly this looks like a polynomial of degree 2. It's a quadratic polynomial. Now we want to solve lambda because the main thing is find eigenvalues. Keep this little thing in mind. Eigenvalue means give me the lambda. That's what I'm asking. So this is how do you get this one? You put this determinant to zero. That's called the characteristic equation. That's what we do. This is the characteristic equation. So when you put the zero, we are able to solve, we get two lambda values, that is eigenvalues are 8 and 2. Now let's go ahead and work more on them, like what are the eigenvectors which correspond to these eigenvalues? Going forward, so for lambda equals 2, what does that mean? Eigenvector, simply write, remember this is, now you're going to plug in. This one is, so let me do for lambda equals 2 here. So when I say lambda equals 2, remember what was my a minus lambda i? My a minus lambda i was what? 5 minus lambda, 3, 3, 5 minus lambda. So now we replace lambda by 2. What do you get? a minus 2i, which is 3, 3, 3, 3. And then this is, here is basically what? a minus lambda uh, 3i, oh sorry. So this one is a minus 2i. So this part is a minus 2i. And this is the vector x equals 0. So basically, we have all the numbers. There are no variables present in a minus 2i. We want to find this vector x going back to our chapter 1. That means find the vector parametric representation of this homogeneous solution. That's what we're basically doing. So we basically will write this in the equivalent, you know, try to write it in such a form that makes our life easier to solve. So when you put this one, you know, you apply the row reduction algorithm. What you get the relationship between x1 and x2. So that's what this is. Can we write that in the relationship of x1 and x2? When we find this one, we get x1 is minus x2. We're looking at this x, guys, the vector x. That's the eigenvector. So 
when you have x1 and x2 you plug it in here minus x2 and then x2 what do you get so what you find is the eigenvector is all possible linear combinations of the vector minus 1 and 1 and that guys is going to give us the eigenvector provided my x2 is non-zero very important because you have a non-zero vector so remember we also talked about eigenbasins so what would be the eigenbasis for lambda equal to? If you remember from your previous slides, it is nothing but this vector, minus 1 and 1. And we are putting them in. So basically this means it is the collection of all possible linear combinations of minus 1 and 1, provided not including 0. You cannot have that because you're having a very specific eigenvector. Okay, let's look for lambda equals 8 now. Once again, we do the same process. That is a minus lambda i. So this is what you're doing. We're doing a minus 8i x equals 0. So just plugging in, chugging out now. So this is what you get, minus 3, 3. Then you apply the row reduction algorithm. Get it back over here. Now when you solve it, this is the relationship you, you get between the elements of the vector x. And when you write it down, this is all possible linear combinations of the vector 1 and 1, uh, not including x1 to be 0. Otherwise, every possible linear combination of 1 and 1 is a uh, eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 8. Once again, we've got to write down the eigenbasis. So what is the eigenbasis corresponding to the eigenvalue um, 8? It's basically the vector 1, 1, putting it in brackets. Okay, let's summarize what we have learned so far. That eigenvalues of A, these are nothing but the solutions of determinant A minus lambda i equals 0. And when you expand the determinant, it becomes a polynomial in lambda. And we have done that and seen it also before. Now, what is the degree of the polynomial in lambda? The degree is always going to be equal to the size of this matrix A. So if I have a 4 by 4 matrix, or correspondingly, the determinant of A minus lambda would be a polynomial in lambda of degree 4. Um, we can later on generalize this concept. So if you have an n by n matrix, the char characteristic polynomial, you know, I'm using short forms, guys, this, the characteristic polynomial, this is characteristic, guys, and this is polynomial. P-O-L-Y is my short form for polynomial. This is a short form for characteristic. Um, of A has degree N. Okay, moving forward. We're going to now start finding eigenvalues of a 3 by 3 matrix. So here's our matrix A uh, of size 3 by 3, 5, 4, 2, 4, 5, 2, triple 2 as the last row. To find the eigenvalues, what do we do? We find the determinant of this. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, remember the eigenvalues means put the determinant to be 0. Now, for a 3 by 3 matrix, we have to make sure that you're using um, your, uh, I'm going to apply the, um, the properties of determinants. I hope, guys, you have gone through those determinants very thoroughly. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult over here. So when you're doing the determinants, because to find the determinant, I like to reduce it in a scenario where my life becomes very simple. Okay? So I want to get as many zeros as possible. Remember, there are no zeros here. So am I able to get zeros? That's the question. So we apply this row reduction algorithm. And remember, one of the properties is that if you multiply a row or a column to another row, the determinant does not change. It remains the same. So that's what we're doing. We're applying this R1 minus R2, R1. I get this scenario. And then I'm doing it on the column so that I can get a zero here too. So now, once I've got the scenario where I can easily apply 
my cofactor expansion and get my work done. Okay, so let's move forward here. We can do the cofactor expansion by R1. We do the cofactor expansion and this is our answer. Okay, keep in mind that this was a three by three degree, uh, three by three matrix. And what we just learned in the summary that if you have a matrix of size three, then the characteristic polynomial will have a polynomial of degree three. And clearly, we have a polynomial of degree three. Notice this one, this is a polynomial of degree three. Um, we are able to get the factors. Now, it means lambda, what does this mean? It means lambda is 10 and one and one. Now remember what we do, we do not write one and one. We say lambda is one with algebraic multiplicity two. That's how we write. We do not repeat the eigenvalues. We write it more professionally, more mathematically, and that is lambda equals one with algebraic multiplicity two, or lambda equal, equals one repeated once. You know, it is repeated, whatever you want to say. I repeat it twice, sorry, one and one. Okay, now once we have found the eigenvalues, the next step is to find eigenvectors. Okay, so our eigenvalues are handy with us. How would we do the eigenvectors? We'll start with lambda equals 10, then we'll go to lambda equal 1. Okay. So for eigenvalue um, uh, lambda equal 10, we're going to find the eigenvectors for lambda equals 10. What are you going to do? a minus 10 i x equals 0. In other words, we have all the bunch of numbers of this matrix. You're going to find this little x, guys. Remember, once again, we are finding the vector parametric description of the, solution, um, of the solutions of this homogeneous equation. Okay, so a minus 10 i, we do the little math, we apply, now remember, we want to make it as, as small as possible, get as many zeros and get make our life more simpler when we want to solve it. So when you write down these numbers, so, you know, we do this one. If you do it like this and apply x1, x2, x3, there's going to be a lot of computation. So the best way to do these problems is apply the algorithm, get as many bunch of zeros as you can. That makes life simple. So you can go through this process. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is row reduction algorithm. There is no determinant. So when you are applying on a simple matrix, only the row operations work. But when you're doing with determinants, now determinants is amazing because you can do both rows and columns um, on the same uh, matrix. Whereas in a normal matrix, you are only allowed to do row operations. So very, very vigilantly when you're doing the math, look at the fact, are you having a normal matrix or you're finding a determinant? So keep those things in perspective. So if I have a normal matrix and I want to reduce it um, to a, an equivalent matrix where I can easily have less computation, I would only apply row op elementary operations, uh, row operations. This is important, very important, guys. So after applying operations, I get into very simpler matrix. And when I do the math and do this matrix multiplication, easily I get the relationship between the elements of the vector x. So when you do this math, we get 5x1 minus 4x2 minus 2x3 equals 0 coming from the first row. The second row gives me x2 minus 2x3 equals 0. So what you're seeing is clearly you see I have two basic variables, one free variable. So that means these elements inside the vector, there is a free variable. This x1, x2, x1, guys, remember, are the variables of the corresponding linear system. Okay, so we find that x2 can be written in terms of x3 and x1 can also be written in terms of x3. Then when we write this one, x is x1, x2, x3, we are able to get a, 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 a eigen eigen vector, which is all possible linear combinations of the vector 2, 2, 1. Okay, remember we have to write down the eigenbases. So make sure you remember that. 
So the eigenbases uh, for uh, lambda equals 10 is nothing but the vector, uh, eigenvector uh, represented by 2, 2, 1. Okay, now let's look at the other eigenvalue lambda equals 1. First of all, to find the eigenvector, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to write the determinant uh, characteristic equation. Uh, that is A minus, now remember, A minus lambda i is nothing but A minus i because your lambda is a 1. That's why you see this one here. Now, when you plug it in over here, remember you have to now solve for x1, x2, x3. So you go ahead and apply the row reduction algorithms. Uh, you can easily figure it out this minus this. And the, uh, the row 2, I'll just write it down what you notice. Basically, if you notice that these two rows are actually multiples of the uh, top row. Uh, for a second row is the same as basically the first row. So you can simply write this one as R2, uh, sorry, minus R2. You'll be doing it on R2, right? So we only can make the changes in uh, R1, remember that's important. So this is R2 minus R1 going to R2. And for this one, what is the row operation? It is R3 minus half R1 going to R3. Even if you don't write it down, you automatically see these last two rows are multiples of the first row. We're, we're good to go here. Um, by the way, this is 4, 4. This is no minus in the front. Please keep this in mind. Let me make sure it's written correctly. 4, 2. Okay, so what do we get? Now this is a common here. 2 is common. Uh, in the first row, I can write this as half. Row 1 goes to row 1. Okay. So now we clearly see that there's only one basic variable, two free variables. Now I want to find the relationship between the elements of the vector x. Just go ahead and plug in this. What you see is that x3 is now written as a, uh, uh, x3 is now dependent upon x1 and x2. Now when we write down the eigenvectors, uh, your eigenvector is basically x1, 1, 0, minus 2, plus x2, 0, 1, 2. So that means what is our eigenvector? Our eigenvector over here is a linear combination of the vector 1, 0, minus 2, and 0, minus, or 1, minus 2. So this eigenvector is all possible linear combinations of the vector 1, 0, minus 2, and 0, 1, minus 2. Um, and provided x1 and x2 cannot both be 0 at the same time. Now, what about the eigenbases here? Okay, let's look at the eigenbases corresponding to this lambda equals 1. Here, it will be basically both these vectors together in a set. Okay, now till now, we were doing eigenvalues which are nice little real numbers. We can have scenarios where we have complex eigenvalues. Let's look at them. So we are going to find only complex eigenvalues. So this is the matrix A. To find eigenvalues, what do we do? We write down the characteristic equation that is determinant of a minus lambda I equals zero. So when you solve this, now remember this is going to be up on the left-hand side, it's going to be a polynomial of degree two. Remember this determinant, which when open it up becomes a polynomial and the degree of the polynomial depends upon the size of the matrix A. So when we solve it, what do we get? So solving it, we get lambda square minus four plus five. Or when you open this up, we get two eigenvalues. Okay, so right now I just want to get you guys get acquainted with finding complex eigenvalues. 
uh, if you have forgotten your complex number system, go back and review. There's plenty and plenty of uh, videos on complex numbers. Okay. Let's now talk about one more concept in 5.2. There's something called similarity and diagonalization. So what is a similar matrix? We say two matrices of size n. Remember, we are always dealing with square matrices. So if I have two matrices A and B of size n, we say A is similar to B. If there exists an invertible matrix P, such that B, the matrix B, is P inverse AP. So if you look in this nice little thing, if you this little picture, I said I have two, um, and we say these two, sorry, let me come back over here in a minute. So we denote these two similar matrices, say A and B, as if I, if you see an A, a little twiddle with a B, it's, uh, this is a symbol in matrix theory that a matrix A is similar to B. And the moment you think about this, that means there is existing an invertible matrix such that P inverse AP is matrix B. That's how you can go back and forth between the two. Now, this transformation, that means the movement from A to P inverse AP, is called a similarity transformation. In other words, suppose if I have a two sets consisting of matrices, okay? Remember, sets can be anything. So my set A, when acted upon by this invertible matrix P, said that P inverse in the front and uh, in the on the left-hand side of A and P multiplied on the right-hand side of A gives me a new matrix. Then we say this set of matrices and this set of matrices are basically similar set. So there's a similarity transformation. Okay, some remarks on our similar matrices. First, if I have a matrix A similar to B, then B is P inverse AP. Now remember, P is invertible, so that means if I multiply P on both sides, what do we get? P, B on the left-hand side, P, P inverse AP. Because P is invertible, that means what? P, P inverse is I. Remember, if we say P is invertible, so P is invertible, That means P, P inverse equals P inverse P equals identity. So that's what happens. So P times B equals I. So this is I, A, P. I is an identity matrix. So I times A. So this is what you get. Now if A is similar to B, now you can do the uh, matrix multiplication. You can have a P, uh, so you can basically apply, you know, do matrix uh, uh, properties. You multiply this by P and you multiply on the right hand side by P inverse, you get this. Now, the matrix P, this invertible matrix, very important. This invertible matrix we are looking at always depends upon the similar matrices, the matrix A and B. And this invertible matrix is not unique. For example, if I take A and B are identity matrices, then P, P is any invertible matrix. P inverse I times P is I. Okay. Okay. Let's look at some theorems. Very helpful to prove that something is not true. That's what this theorem really, really is helpful for. So if I have two similar matrices, Then if two similar matrices happen, that all these five statements have to be true. That means if they're similar, their determinants have to be the same. They both will have the same characteristic polynomial. Both will have the same eigenvalues with the same multiplicities. That means the algebraic multiplicities. They both have the same rank. Rank means the number of basic variables of your matrix. And A is invertible if and only if B is invertible. So if any one of them doesn't work, that means the matrices are not similar. Very important, guys, to prove that something, two matrices are not similar. Any one of these five 
statements here in theorem A is not true, automatically we say it, these matrices are not similar. So it's very powerful in showing that since they cannot be similar, any put properties fail over here. So let's start with a simple way of proving similarities here. We are given a matrix A, B, and the invertible matrix B. When you are given this and you want to prove that A is similar to B. If A is similar to B, that means B is P inverse AP or PB is AP. So what you have to do is just plug and do simply matrix multiplication, PB and AP. If the, when you do matrix they are the same, then automatically they are similar. Now, if the question says, is these two matrices similar, that means Oh, all the five statements have to be true. Great. So we start checking the most simplest is finding determinants. If the determinants of these matrices are not the same, automatically they are not similar to each other. So determinant of A is what? 1 minus 4, negative 3, or B is 4 minus 1, 3. Clearly this matrix is not similar to this matrix. Let's look at one more example. I have a matrix A and a matrix B. I want to prove whether they are similar. The question is, is similarity? So you find first determinants. Oh, the determinants are the same. But remember, you have to prove all those five statements. Okay, do they have the same rank? Same rank means the number of basic variables are the same. Clearly this, let's look at A. These two rows are linearly independent. That means it has two basic variables. Similarly, B has two basic variables because these rows are not multiples of each other. And hence the rank for A and B is two. And that is two. Let's find out the characteristic polynomial. The determinant of a minus lambda i is lambda squared minus 3r lambda minus 4. You know, you can do the math. That's a practice for you guys. Let's look at the determinant of b minus lambda i. We get to be lambda squared minus 4. Clearly, this characteristic polynomial is not the same as this characteristic polynomial. As the characteristic polynomials are not the same, even though the determinant is the same, the rank is the same. A is not similar to B. Okay. Some carefulness and really important part. If theorem A, which is given on page 15 in this lecture note, is only applicable when A and B are similar. Now suppose A and B have the same eigenvalues. It does not imply that, does not imply that they are similar. Okay, clearly they have the same eigenvalues. Remember two and two, two and two? They actually, this is two, um, this has eigenvalues two with multiplicity, uh, what do you say, two and uh, also uh, A also has same eigenvalues with multiplicity two. Uh, the reason is this is an upper triangular matrix and this is a diagonal matrix. So the eigenvalues lie on the diagonal for both of them. Keep that in mind. Also, then you can check the determinants. What is the determinant for this one? Is four. Is four. That's fine. But then you have to check their ranks. The rank is also two and two. Then that means same eigenvalues. Check the characteristic polynomials. Check the other uh, things which we need. And that's how we get our answers. Okay, so we are done with section five, two guys. And these are the set of problems I want you to do. Uh, number 1 to 10, 15, and 16. Thank you.